All right, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, depends on where you are. So today uh, we are very happy to have the third event of the lecture series on corporate governance. Uh, before I start to introduce the speaker, let me um, introduce the event briefly. So I am Jin Yang. I'm a professor of finance at Indiana University and the director for uh, the Institute for Corporate Governance. Um, today's speaker is uh, Mike Weisbach. So Mike, uh, Professor Mike Weisbach, uh, Michael S. Weisbach is the Ralph W. Kurz Chair in Finance at Ohio State University, as well as Research Associate of the National Bureau of Economic Research. He has previously taught at University of Illinois, the University of Chicago, the University of Rochester, and the University of Arizona. Professor Weisbach is a former editor at the Review of Financial Studies. Uh, as you know, this is one of the leading academic journals in finance and has been associate editor of five other academic journals. Professor Weisbach has broad ranging research and teaching interest. I have more audience coming in, so let me put my mask up. In finance, uh, Professor Weisbach has a broad ranging research and teaching interest in finance and economics with specialties in corporate finance, corporate governance, and private equity. To me, Mike is a legend in the field of corporate governance. Mike has 63 publications on these related topics. These papers have won a number of major awards, including the Bridal Group Prize twice, uh, the Jason Prize, the Pharma BFA Prize, and the Wharton Worth Award. Believe it or not, Mike has nearly 46,000 citations on Google Scholar. I wish I have a tenth of that. Uh, more importantly, Mike has been a wonderful mentor and a dear friend. Uh, without further ado, I will introduce, uh, I will give the podium to Mike Westbach. And his title is Risk Perceptions, Board Networks, and Directors Monitoring. So we have a heavy event today. Mike would have roughly 45 minutes. Uh, you have questions, you can send that through Q&A. If you're on the room, you can also ask questions. And uh, after that, we're going to have our discussant. I'm going to introduce Xiao Yun uh, briefly. And then we have another maybe 10 minutes also if you have more Q&As. Thank you, Mike. The podium is yours. Thank, thank you so much, and thank you so much for that that kind um, in, in introduction. Um, the I, I'm not going to go talk without a mask. I'm in a room, and everyone is at least ten or fifteen feet away from me, and I, I, I think you, you'll hear me better if, if I'm not. Um, we're actually in Bloomington, Indiana. I guess this is the first one in in person or hybrid format. I understand there are lots of you out there. Um, I, I've actually become somewhat of a regular in Bloomington. My son is a sophomore here at IU, so I've been driving in and out. Uh, and so it's, it's been great to actually uh, come to Kelly and see some, some people here and, and talk to some people here. Um, there's a few, uh, kind of a weird, a bunch of weird things about here. So, you know, first of all, when I've ever I've come to Bloomington, um, Jia Yun has been one of the ones hosting me around. So it's very strange that I am here and she's not, and she's in, in Shanghai. And the other strange thing is that, um, is that uh, I'm, I'm, I'm American and I'm talking about China and she, you know, so, so June and Xiao Yun are, are I mean, so it's just, there's all, a lot of uh, back, so things are a little bit backward, backwards feeling thing. Uh, and one thing uh, before I begin on sort of a more serious note, it is, it is January 6th and um, many of you aren't from the US, but I, I, I'm an American. And so, um, you know, it was a very tragic day for, for us last year. And so um, I guess I just hope that, um, you know, for many, many of us who are completely traumatized by, by what happened. And, um, and I just hope at the end of the day, when you go to bed, the worst thing that happens to you today is that you had to hear a bad talk this morning and, and, and not, that, uh, not that there was any, uh, any threats to our, our, our country or anything like that. Uh, but anyway, so let me tell you a little bit about, um, about the paper. Uh, first of all, I want to thank my co-authors. Um, uh, I guess I'm 
Okay, can I point to the screen that you can? Okay. okay, Chen Lin, you all know, is, is one of my, he's made, uh, my friend in Hong Kong. He's been amazingly prolific and a great guy and uh, just a general great person. Uh, Thomas is also, you may have heard of Thomas, is a newly tenured uh, mem faculty member at Hong Kong University. And um, every time, I, you know, when the, before COVID happened, I used to like to visit Hong Kong and I, I would usually go there for the food and then end up writing a paper with, uh, with, with these guys. And then in this paper, uh, so this is our third paper. In this paper, we have a, another co-author, uh, when she, Dave uh, Ding and Dave, um, Dave is just an incredibly uh, energetic and uh, bright PhD student who you may have, whose name you may have already seen because we've got a couple of publications already, uh, but you will certainly hear more from him in the, in the future. And so this paper um, sort of, I think, uh oh, it's not, clicker's not working. Um, um, let me just, I'll, I'll talk from back here then. Um, can, can you see? Uh, Hold up. Clicker's still not working. Uh, uh, there we go. Okay, I'll stand here. Can you see me okay? Um, uh, Xiaoyun, can you see me okay? Uh, I don't think I can see you, but uh, I can hear you. Okay, hold so. up, just hold up for a sec. Can now it's see? working. It's now working. Okay, Good. Clicker's now working. Okay. All right. So, all right. So, sorry about all the technical problems. I just sort of feel like yeah. I'm talking to people in an actual room, but it might have been all easier if I was just, uh, oh, I can, now I can see myself up there. Oh, no, that's not good. Oh. And, um, and so then, uh, you know, so basically, uh, the, uh, this, is, this, this paper is it kind of a continuing work that I've been doing for my whole career. Uh, and the question is, to what extent are boards of directors actually monitoring management? And the, the question of boards of directors monitoring management, it literally dates to Adam Smith. And there's a wonderful section from The Wealth of Nations where he, he, the, the phrase other people's money come from that, that section of, uh, of The Wealth of Nations. Um, and if I could summarize a gigantic literature that I've been a part of, it, there's evidence that suggests that boards actually do monitor management at least some of the time um, and you know and there's been a million papers about when they do more monitoring and do less monitoring and all this what's not clear and but there's far less clear in the literature is why they do the monitoring in in the first place and so oh wait backwards I'm wrong way and um, and so there's a number of potential reasons that have been proposed in the literature as to why they they might monitor uh, certainly they have direct incentives um, because they, uh, you know, they they have stock options and they own a little stock in the companies they 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 are uh, directors of. Uh, they um, develop, a, you know, and Palma and Jensen have a very famous paper where they talk about how directors have an incentive to develop reputations as good as good managers. Uh, and that's why they would monitor well. On the other hand, as been pointed out by a number of people, uh, they also have re rep incentives to develop reputations as people who won't kind of rock the boat and be difficult directors. And so if they want to get on other boards, it's often um, uh, good to develop the reputation as actually not a good monitor. So, uh, and then another um, potential, so, so that, that explanation is uh, again, not, a little bit unclear as to why they monitor. Um, and a third uh, explanation is a threat of regulatory penalties. And that's the threat, that's the explanation that we focus on in, in this paper. And so, uh, you know, and, and sometimes when I think uh, if you were, if I were to talk, I'm coming to some of the IU PhD students tomorrow, and if you were to ask them, well, how would you go about um, measuring whether the threat of regulatory penalties um, would affect the monitoring of directors, they would probably um, think about it, they mumble a few things and they say, well, I don't know. It's a really hard question to identify because basically in any country, uh, you have basically all directors face the same regulatory penalty threats, or at least uh, as, as far as we can tell as, as outside observers. And how do you look at whether one faces more or less? Or, you know, I, I would just, if you had asked me this, a student asked me how we would go about testing this, I would have thrown up my hands and, 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 and I, I wouldn't have known how to do it, okay? Because basically in order to do this, you have to uh, uh, you observe variation in the, in the director's uh, perceptions of how, what the risks of the future penalties they are and how they vary. And you also have to be able to observe their monitoring, which is actually not so easy to do in most countries. And, um, 
And so it, it would have been quite a difficult task. And it turns out that um, there are unique features of the Chinese corporate governance system that allow us to do both, okay? So we are not you know, doing this because we want to write a paper about China, even though China is an incredibly important and interesting country. We are doing this because of the institutional features about Chinese corporate governance that allow us to test a hypothesis there that we, I, as far as I can tell, you can't really test in, in other countries. Maybe there's other countries that have similar features to China uh, that I, I don't know. Um, and so anyway, so what, what are these institutions? Well, okay, um, so it turns out that there are regulatory penalties for directors who do not perform their fiduciary responsibilities. And uh, uniquely to China, as far as I know, these are actually public information. So that, you know, you can, there's a database and I'll show you how, where it is. I'm sorry, closer? Yeah, okay. Uh, thank you, Jim. And so, oh, by the way, if you have questions, um, I'd like to make this as much like a normal seminar as possible. So, um, so those of you who are sitting here, please just raise your hands or just interrupt. And June, if, 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 you have, if those of you who are online, please uh, let June know and June will ask questions. What am I doing wrong? Because they cut off your hat. Oh, yeah. oh, no, this is better. Is this better? Yeah. Okay. All right. I will try and do this. Yes, sir. Uh, and so I have to look there because my, my back there is. Okay. So um, it's me. So okay. So um, and okay. The other, so that, that that's that's public information. And another thing that's public information in China that's not public information in the U.S. or I think any other country I've ever heard of is the actual votes of directors are public information. Okay. And, uh, and, and the other thing is that it's possible in China, this, this third thing would probably be possible in most countries is you can tell which, which directors are connected to which other directors and through a, a mechanism, which I will describe. So, so, so basically, um, so how, so in order, just conceptually, how do we think about how penalties will affect directors' actions? And, um, and so certainly, the, it's pretty obvious that they affect the directors who receive the penalties themselves, okay? What's not so obvious, and, and from a policy perspective and really an understanding of corporate governance perspective, is how the threat of future penalties affects the actions of the directors who aren't penalized, right? So in other words, if you're thinking about, you know, from a public policy perspective, exerting effort in order to, uh, to, to you know, increase corporate governance by penalizing directors that, that are not you know, um, you know, obeying their fiduciary responsibility, you know, it really it would be nice if you, you know, change the actions of more than the actual people who you, you penalize directly. Okay? So in other words, we would like to think that there are some indirect penalties of direct, uh, uh, in other words, they the indirect effects of penalties where they induce non-penalized directors to perform their fiduciary responsibilities and monitor the managers, okay? And well, what does that depend on? Well, that depends on, you know, if, if I were to go and penalize June, well, the question whether it was Zhao Yun, her friend, uh, would, then, would then know that, um, oh my God, the, they, they penalized June, I, I better uh, perform better or not, right? And so the question is, to what extent does a penalty on one director affect the perception of, uh, of other directors. And, and to me, this is very much related to one of my all time favorite papers in any area, the Holmstrom um, uh, indir Indirect Incentives paper, which was originally written in 82 and republished in 1999, um, where he, he basically argues that the, the indirect incentives, I don't think he uses the word indirect incentives, uh, depend on how much there is a perception of the risk that the individual faces. Yes, a question. Yeah, right, yeah. Quick question. Well, I'm, what's your name? I'm Wenyu. Wenyu, okay, so now Wenyu has a question, okay? Because yeah. they can't see you in the, yeah, okay, sorry. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I think you might look at this in your paper later, but uh, so I, I haven't even read it in detail yet. So I think my question here is that um, for those non penalized directors, uh, if they're connected to these guys who get penalized, do you think that they are also more likely to resign or quit the, the position later on? Like, of course, they are going to the non penalized directors? Yes. Um, I, don't the I don't know. I don't know. I um, think there's some analytical evidence showing that they, you know. I, I don't know. Um, by, by the way, co authors, if you're actually logged on, send June an email or something if, if you know the answer to that question, okay? Dave, if you're there, I, I don't know. Um, 
I can't see that. I can't. I can't see who's on. Uh, June told me there were three hundred people registered, so maybe they are. Yes. So there's a question from my colleague Chuck Chuck Rosinka. Yeah, Chuck yeah. asks, who decides what should be penalized? Penalized? Who levies the penalties, and what happens to the money? Um, I will talk about the penalty penalization process in a minute. I don't know what happens to the money. I assume it goes to the Chinese government and uh, gets invested in U.S. Treasury bonds. Uh, but but I, I, I don't know for I don't know for sure. Uh, but uh, I, I don't know. Thank um, you, Mike. Sure. Um, okay. So okay. Now, how the question? The next question is: How do we think that perceptions of possible penalties vary um, across uh, individual directors and? This is, this is a question that um, psychologists and behavioral economists have actually talked a lot about. And they've developed this idea of, of salience. And so basically what salience says, okay, is that individuals will update their priors about, some, about something happening depending on how close they are to the outcome. And so uh, this Tversky and Kahneman were the first ones to, to develop this notion as for many notions of behavioral economics. And that it, well, the, the example they gave is the impact of seeing a house burning on the subjective probability of such accidents is probably greater than the impact of reading about it in a local paper, okay? Or uh, translated to today's world, the impact of uh, having a relative get COVID is probably different than it having uh, reading about the number of cases in, in, the, in the newspaper or online. So in other words, you know, how close you are to a, an event, especially ba a bad event, uh, will affect um, how much your behavior is influenced. And, and this is a quick summary. I will say that there is a gigantic literature in behavioral economics and, and um, and psychology suggesting that this is how people actually behave in many contexts, okay? And so what we are doing in this paper is kind of relying on this idea for our identification purposes. And so if you don't believe this idea, then basically what, what our results should find basically nothing, okay? So this is kind of a, a necessary ingredient, I think, for us to find the results that I will show you that we do find, okay. Um, so can I interrupt you again? Of course, yes, yes. So yes. Both, there, there are two um, questions coming in. Both are related to the penalties. Mm -hmm. uh, one's from Shresh, uh, Shresh Kuma, regulator appointing or corporate governance committee uh, to levy penalty. I think you're probably gonna get there. And Anup Agwa, Agrawa said, uh, that's a question. Who imposes the penalties, the company or the state? All right, let me get to the pen. Uh, first yes. of all, hello, Anoop. I haven't seen you in ages. And, uh, and good to see you online. And secondly, uh, let me get to, this is related to Chuck's question. So let me, I have a slide about this in just a second. Yes, please. So, um, okay, so, okay. Now there's possible reasons for salience in our uh, context. And, and what is it an independent director could overreact to the observations and overestimate the actual penalty risk, uh, which, uh, and the second is that a director could increase a previously too low estimate of the penalty risk when the tension is directed to the relevant um, event. And so the, the, the first is called, uh, is, I, I, the, various, the various papers, uh, Rodolo, Gianni, Schleifer is, is, you know, argues the first, and, um, and uh, Big Chan, uh, I can't pronounce that name, uh, Hershleifer and Eva Welch and the co-author's name, who I, I have trouble pronouncing, uh, it, it developed the, uh, the, the second, okay. Um, and so the research question is, how do penalties uh, to one director affect other directors' perceptions of the likelihood that they will be penalized? And secondly, does that affect the actions of the directors, okay? And, um, so these are the questions we want to sort of address in the paper. Um, and so the goal is to, what we do is we measure shocks to perceptions of directors about the likelihood that they will be penalized, okay? And so what we do is we use the, this idea of salience to identify the impact of, you know, and, and some people have read this paper and pointed out that, you know, it could be rational learning as opposed to salience. And, and that's sort of, to us, that's perfectly fine. Um, but we're basically we're using the notion that people um, learn more from, the pe from actions that affect people they know 
Um, and we, we, we identify the per change perceptions on the director's actions cross-sectionally. Uh, we have a huge database that uh, I, I will say Dave in particular was very good at, um, at assembling. Um, at 2.8 million votes from 19,000 independent directors from 3,700 public companies in China from 2004 to 2019. Okay, and so basically we use, so it's a huge sample. We use um, regulatory penalties, it's exogenous shocks to the network. And that's kind of where we're going with the paper. Okay, and so basically summarizing the findings, we find that being connected to a penalized director substantially increases the likelihood that the director will dissent. And I'll tell you exactly what that means in a few minutes um, in, against the management proposal. And the effect is stronger when the director is kind of more similar to the director in question and when the firm itself is a priori more likely to be penalized. And so, the, so we kind of view the second set of results as, as sort of a, as a way of linking the first results with this whole notion of salience. And so the conclusion is that potential regulatory sanctions do appear to be an important factor in motivating directors monitoring. So I think our, we think our paper is like the first one that links the actual penalties to directors' actions in kind of what we, th we think is a, is a fairly well identified experiment. That's kind of the paper in a, in a nutshell. So I am, um, okay. So, okay. so let me give you a little bit of background, and I'm sure Xiao Yun's laughing because she, you know, she knows she knows much more about this is this is Chinese institutions, and so I will do my best uh, to summarize them, and she can tell me uh, where I'm wrong. Um, between 1900 and 2000, there was actually no legal ob obligation for listed firms in China to hire uh, independent directors, and in um, in 2001, there was a rule that said that listed firms should have at least one third of directors be independent directors. In 2004, um, the listed firms have to disclose the board meeting proposals and dissension votes regarding uh, material business decisions right after the board meeting. And, and, and the, the places where they're actually disclosed are described in, in, in the paper. Um, and after 2004, listed firms have to disclose the dissension opinions of, um, of independent directors in the previous fiscal year in the annual reports. And so this is why our sample starts in, in 2004, because simply their, their data didn't exist before 2004. Okay? And so basically, uh, what is really cool about this is for, for this giant country with all these firms, you can actually observe every single listed firm and who their independent directors are uh, and what their voting behavior is. And also, uh, and so that's, that's, that's quite uh, quite clear. Interesting thing, and um, there's. Uh, by the way, I, I said we're not the first to use these, these data. There's uh, actually it's our the previous speaker in this series, Wei Zhang, has a very nice paper uh, who who actually uses this paper that was published a few years ago in the um, in the archives. So um, I also know I I I bet Wei Zhang and two co-authors that I who whom I do not know who are I'm sure responsible for it. I, 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 I don't like to uh, jinx uh, the junior co-author. So, uh, so okay. So that okay. Now there's a bunch of pay, uh, questions about how the penalties work. Okay, and so I think one difference between China and the U.S. and the corporate governance is that in the U.S. we rely on shareholders to initiate the corporate governance actions for the most part. In China. Um, the, uh, the, the investors mostly rely on regulators to protect their interests. Um, and so the, this, this picture here shows how it works. Um, first, there's a suspicious activity that's observed by the regulators or a whistleblower who reports something. Then the regulator does the investigation. Uh, they, they, if they find fraud, then they would punish both the firms and the individuals uh, who are there, okay? Now, a, con a, a really interesting um, feature of the corporate governance law is that the directors would then be, are actually immunized against penalties if it shows that they voted against the penalty. And, the, um, and so, this is, so, the, so the votes against the penalties are both actually help the independent directors themselves because they immunize them against, you know, because in the US, the, penalty, the votes are all private. And so you can't just go and say, well, I voted against it. And even the firm, the firm, the firm likes it. Whereas in, in China, you actually have a record that says you voted against it. And so therefore, if you're worried about, the, about being penalized, you might vote against it. Now keep in mind, 
it's kind of a big deal if you vote against uh, a management proposal precisely because it is public, right? If you simply tell, presumably, if you don't like the management proposal, you might tell him, pri him or her privately that this isn't maybe such a good idea, uh, but you know, it takes, you have to really hate it or be really worried about uh, penalties in order to vote against them in a public forum. Because it is true, and the, the, the paper I just mentioned, and, and we also find that there, uh, the stock price declines when you vote against, um, against the management. Okay, so, uh, so, okay, so. Anyway, so that's the, so I hope I answered the questions about the Institute. Yes, there's a question. First of all, what's your name? Uh, my name is David. David, yes, okay. So in your opinion, what types of the management procedures are you dealing with? I'll, I'll get to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but, but so the, the proposals, are, there's a list of the kinds of proposal. I have a slide about that. Um, so, so basically what this slide shows is the, is the number of, penal, uh, of penalty directors. So in other words, the penalties are this dark uh, solid line and you show that goes up and uh, the penalties go up and so do the objections and dissensions. So, the, so just as a rough gauge, the number of penalties and dissensions go up. And one reaction you might have as well, that the, the time series coincides with the increase in the number of public firms. And if you look at it on a per firm basis, you've seen the same, the same pattern. Okay, so, um, and uh, the source of these data are this, uh, this corporate governance database. And there are uh, 20,000 independent directors. Um, there is, uh, each director has on average 1.8 positions and they serve for 3.8 years. Uh, I'm not sure I have a slide on this, but basically the way governance works in China is you can serve up to two terms and you're set, you can't do a third term, but after a few years off of the board, you then can come back and be on the board again. So those are, those are the rules. Um, and the average compensation for each position is 3,900 US dollars in 2004 and $12,000 in 2019, which, um, which I, you know, if you do if you do three or four of them and you kind of don't do a whole lot of work, it's not, not a little bad extra income. I mean, you know, it's not. Okay. <laughs> but uh, okay, and so the, uh, the the database on penalties, and you can see that you know there's you know millions and millions of votes, and there are seven thousand penalties, so they don't occur that often. Um, there are four thousand four hundred uh, people who received the monetary fine on average, twenty four thousand dollars. Uh, and and some people get banned. You know, 244 people were banned temporarily, uh, and then 113 people are banned for life. So you know, and, and so if you're, and I assume the embarrassment of being penalized in a public forum is, is just a huge deal for these these directors. So you know, aside from the um, from the penalties the directly, on, so people really, really, really don't want to get penalized uh, by this this. These events, um, and so, um, so in other words, the way we the way we get the data on the directors is uh, 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 the next page. You have the English translation. Yeah, yeah. What's that? Yeah, next yeah. page. Well, oh, so, okay. so that so that we have to read. Uh, we basically, we go. We, we manually read. Julie, I need your help here. So, um, so what is uh, what what is this word here? Yeah. I think it's our next page. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Come on. That's opposition. Right. Opposition. 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 Yeah. What's that? What's this? Camp of. Uh, the second one is abstaining. Yo, come on, you can't cheat. It's oh, I know, I have the same page as yours. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so uh, one of the, I wanted to make sure that June still remembered her Chinese because you know she's uh, been in, in Bloomington, Indiana Thank for a long time. So, yeah, so okay, so basically, so yeah, objection, abstention, raising dissension, and expressing objection. And so basically, what we did was we went through and had the machine search for these words um, and. Um, and uh, Zhao Yun can tell us exactly uh, how to pronounce them. Um, and then afterwards, we uh, we went in um, and manually read all. And I use the word "we" uh, royally. You, you can guess which co-authors did the. Presumably, it's not the ones that are born in the U.S. or Germany did the reading. Um, and uh, and we read the annual reports and ended up with uh, 3,400 dissension votes on um, so many unique proposals. Okay, so. Uh, so, so, so in other words, there's not, there, you know, there's millions of votes and there's, uh, we can identify this not, you know, th a few thousand dissension votes. So it doesn't happen that often, but when it happens, it's a, it's a big deal. Okay. And, um, and so somebody, it was a question you asked about what kind of proposals they are, uh, financials, uh, 
governance, personnel. Um, and so basically these are the kinds of proposals that are, yes, question. Sorry, but do you have an ESG proposal in your data? I can't hear you. Do you also have ESG proposals in your ESG proposal, that's interesting because uh, ESG proposals nobody cares about. Uh, they, uh, they, 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 they almost <laughs> never descend on those, okay? So uh, <laughs> this is what my core was. So, um, ESG, I guess, yes, the, the most fashionable topic in the world right now. And so, uh, but no, we don't have many ESG proposals. Essentially, okay. So actually, let me see the next one. So basically, the way that the the uh, I think the way to understand the the identification, the way we classify directors, is uh, is this picture. So basically, suppose that um, that this firm G is penalized. Okay, and so um, so firm G has on there. Mr. T2, Mr. P, Mr. T1. I don't know why we came up with these names for the, for the people, but what we did. Um, and the penalized firms are here. So, so firm G would be the penalized firm. Now, Mr. P, on the other, on the other hand, uh, also serves on the board of firm Y. And so basically, um, so firm Y is, is, is um, not penalized, but has a director that is penalized uh, as well, Mr. P was penalized because he's also serving on um, Firm G, which was penalized, but Firm Y is not penalized, but has a director on um, who, who was penalized. And then this would, this, in this, and, and basically, in the, and then on Firm Y, there's a director we call Mr. T4. And Mr. T4 presumably knows Mr. P because of the fact that they served on the board of Firm Y and uh, together. Right, and so therefore, um, and apparently it, in Chinese boards, there's a lot of socializing and dinners and all this kind of thing. And so therefore, it's it, it, we hard to imagine that that you know once you serve on a board with somebody, you don't actually know them at least a reasonable what reasonably well. And so basically, Mr. T four, so so Mr. T four is on the board of Firm J, and and presumably is is the question is does salience mean that Mr. T4 is, um, is affected by the penalty that Mr. P suffered or not. And so what, essentially what, what we do econometrically is to compare the actions of Mr. T4 with Mr. C2 or Mr. C1 who are not connected to the penalized firm. Okay, so in other words, we, 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 we go several layers away to remove the people who are affected directly by the penalties. And the question we wanna consider in the paper is to what extent are there indirect uh, effects of this? And, and so we, we essentially econometrically compare the people like Mr. T4 who are connected to the penalty event through this indirect channel or with the people who have no connection with the penalized event. And so presumably um, the hypothesis is that Mr. T4 would, um, would be, so the difference should be positive in their actions. Yes, Jen. There are several questions coming in. I will ask a few. Okay. And then you can decide which one you want to postpone till later. Okay. So one question related to this graph is from my colleague Alexandra. He was asking, does the effect stop in the first link of the network or does it propagate to the second order links and so on? Um, we've gotten that. I, we don't have results on that in this paper. Uh, that's on our list of things to maybe do in the future. Uh, okay, so that. that's a great question. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So there are um, three questions along two different dimensions. One is um, Anup Agrawa, he wants to go back. And he asked uh, whether the penalties are partially or partly based on the state objectives rather than purely firm objectives. In other words, would the state uh, penalize directors more harshly when the directors ignore a state objective? We do, I don't know the answer to that question and um, I don't have any way of, no, way of answering it with the data we have. So. Yeah, I think some of the data is about fraud or related party transactions. Yeah. So to that is probably mostly for the firms, I think so. but, but your co-author maybe later can yeah, answer yeah, yeah, some yeah, of the yeah, questions yeah. here. So uh, another question is related to um, this direct or, effect of um, you know one penalized director on others. Okay. There are two questions on that and they are both related to risk aversion. To what extent this trigger directors think about risk and how would that 
risk aversion play a role in your study? Uh, so there's the last question. I don't know. I mean, we can't measure obviously the, the utility functions of the directors. So all we can measure is the extent to which they vary by their closeness to the penguin director. So you are taking the perspective they are more aware of the risk rather than their risk aversion will change. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But, All right, but thanks. Yeah. You know, maybe I should get going because I only have 10 more minutes and I don't want to take Shayu's time because I'm sure she has a lot of interesting things to say. So, um, okay, so basically the way the specification, we use a difference in differences. Uh, specification where we look at dissension and we looked at the, the basically B, the beta, the, this variable is just a, a, um, a zero one based on whether they are connected. And then there's a bunch of other, we have lots of fixed effects and lots of other stuff in the, in the regression. Um, and the main result is here is that in fact, the more connected you are, if you are connected to a director, that you go up, uh, the dissension rate goes up and it goes up by a lot. Um, the average dissension rate is 0.29%. And if you are connected to a penalized director, it goes up to 0.69%. So basically it more than doubles. Um, and so that's controlling for a whole bunch of other stuff. You can see all the controls here. Um, and, uh, and, then, um, and then robustness, what we do is we looked at, uh, at how, uh, how bad the penalty is. And basically what we show is that this actually isn't in the paper and Xiao Yun has, but it's true. Um, and the worse the penalty is, the, uh, the you know, in terms of the number of people who are penalized, the bigger the fine, uh, fines are, the more likely, you, in other words, the worse the penalty is to the director you're connected to, the more likely you are to, uh, to Descent in if in, in your company, okay, um, and you can see that the the dynamics, the the voting, the change in voting behavior seems to go up and it goes up permanently, okay, um, and then um, and then the size of the penalty matters again. The connected is it, it goes up, and the larger the monetary fine, the larger is the connected director's reaction, um, and then um, now finally uh, an, another idea is that salience presumably will depend on, uh, you know, the idea is that you would perceive yourself facing a risk and presumably you would see that that would be a bigger effect if you think of yourself as similar to the person who's being penalized, right? So that what we try and do is to look at uh, a measure of how similar the potentially, uh, the, the, the connected director is to the director who was penalized and so we look at the background overlap and whether the same gender. And so we have this slide, which is so suppose you have Dave, who's a finance professor with a CPA, uh, then, and Bob is an accounting professor. They would have an overlap of two, by the way, we class them because they both know accounting and they're both professors. Whereas if Alice is a lawyer, then there would be no overlap with, um, with Dave, who's a, who's one, one's a male. And so also the same gender, obviously, it's one after the same gender. And, Zero if they're not. Uh, just in this one fact in China is still a very male dominated world. And so the vast majority of directors are, are in fact men. Um, and so you see that basically these results show that the more of a connection you have with the directors, the bigger the effect of them being penalized uh, on your actions is. Um, and so um, now another uh, potential uh, source of variation. Is if is with the firm, right? So, so in other words, suppose that you are at a firm, and for whatever reason, you don't think your firm will ever be penalized. Then you're less likely. Then it's then the threat of a potential penalty is unlikely to induce you to vote uh, a, a, a dissent against the management. Again, just so you remind you, it's very costly for a director to dissent in these things, right? So your, your stock, firm stock will go down. Everyone in the world knows it. You know, you're unlikely to be added to future boards. And so it's, a, it's not something you wanna do. Uh, and so what we do is we first try and predict how likely it is that the firm will be penalized. And we, we basically have a, the question is um, how on the left-hand side we predict the penalty. And so basically um, firms that are doing well, with high ROA are less likely to be penalized. Firms, larger firms, less likely to be penalized. If there's high analyst coverage, they're less likely to be penalized and there's low cash flow volatility, they're less likely to be penalized. And so therefore what we do is we look at these, those as risk indicators and basically show that the more likely you are being, to be penalized, 
the less likely you are to dissent in response to a connected director uh, being penalized. So that's the, this variable here. So, um, and so finally, um, in terms of being penalized, you're, uh, there are actually uh, consequences to the people being penalized. Um, your, your total salary, that's counting your director income goes down, the number of board positions you get goes down, and the salary per position goes down. So you get less board positions and they're less lucrative. So the directors do suffer a, a substantial cost to being penalized. Um, and finally, so, so, the, so the results, in, in, uh, just to summarize, um, the being connected to a penalized director substantially increases the likelihood that you'll vote against the management proposal. Uh, this change is long lasting. Um, and the changes are larger when, uh, the, when the observing and penalized director share the same background and gender. And they're larger when the firm is riskier or poorly performing. And so the there, so the idea is that there is a potential, uh, in other words, the potential incentives uh, changing firm's behavior is that when when directors perceive the likelihood of, of being penalized to go up, they they change their actions and they're more likely to dissent in these proposals. Presumably, they're more likely to monitor managers in other ways as well. So I, I rushed through those last few slides because I didn't want to uh, to, to short Jan, Jan Yoon on her time because she's she's literally calling in from Shanghai uh, and again uh, somehow it seems wrong that she's not in Bloomington uh, with the rest of us uh, because you know I still think of her as a and probably will for the rest of her life think of her as a Kelly faculty member as do uh, many people here in Kelly but anyway so uh, why don't we turn the floor over to her? All right, thanks, Mike. Uh, I'll bring you back after starting this discussion. So let me introduce my um, friend and former colleague Xiao Yun as uh, a discussant. Professor Xiao Yun Yu is a professor of finance at the Shanghai Advanced Institute of Finance. Um, Xiao Yun has been here at Cali uh, and was my colleague for 16 years. Uh, and Xiao Yun has always been my role model. And in the early years, at least the first five years in my career, uh, my name tag at major finance conferences were essentially Xiao Yun's Indiana colleague. Uh, nobody knew me, but everybody knew about Xiao Yun. So my name is Xiao Yun's Indiana colleague. And I was very proud of being Xiao Yun's Indiana colleague. Um, we miss you terribly, Xiao Yun, here. And Xiao Yun is a wonderful scholar in corporate finance and a China expert. So Xiao Yun will dive in from Shanghai. Xiao Yun, the podium is yours. Hey, can you see the screen? Um, so Cassidy is working on it. Participant. Can, can you see the uh, uh, slide on the screen? Not yet, Xiaoyun. Um, OK, I'll slide. wait. Sure. The webinar participants can. The people in the classroom cannot yet. OK, now it works. OK. OK. okay. Well, uh, I want to thank uh, June for such a kind words. Um, I also thank Lorraine and June for uh, inviting me uh, to discuss uh, this uh, Max paper. It's always a pleasure. Um, so let me just uh, uh, go ahead uh, directly look at uh, what this paper is about. Uh, so there's actually a, a quite a, a heated discussion in the board literature uh, in terms of uh, how to motivate board directors uh, to exert efforts of monitoring. Uh, but in general, you think about it, you know, how do we incentivize people? Uh, we gave the carrots and gave the sticks, right? Now, uh, in terms of sticks, uh, they are so-called direct sticks. Uh, you impose direct penalties and you impose wealth consequences uh, for directors not performing his or her job. Uh, what Mike and his co-authors are doing is look at the so-called indirect uh, sticks. So it's not really the penalty, but it's a perceived risk of potentially being penalized and bearing the consequences could potentially serving the discipline effect. So namely, uh, the question, sorry, the questions uh, the authors ask is whether a director observes a colleague uh, being penalized 
uh, would that change the director's own incentive to monitor? Now, in terms of empirical evidence, I think Mac did a very uh, a careful and thorough discussion. And let me just quickly summarize here. Um, we look at a, a sample over 30, 700 firms uh, from 2004 to 2019. And these are manually collected large data um, on the voting behaviors of individual uh, uh, independent directors. Uh, the nice thing about this data is, is able, uh, it allows authors to link a director's observation of a penalty of the colleague uh, to director's own voting behaviors. Uh, so they found that the observing director is more likely to vote against a board proposal after a colleague director in another board uh, being sanctioned by the government. We call that, we call that uh, penalized directors. Okay, so uh, uh, my comments here is that uh, uh, the one thing I like about a paper is it actually, it's always have a very intuitive, robust findings and, and I look for a penalty spillover or dis disciplinary effect uh, uh, on peers. Uh, it would have a, a very nice uh, uh, policy implications for academic and, uh, and policy makers. In a way, uh, I do work in, in board and I do work in, in fraud and government perspective. And from the policy perspective, you always think about, you know, uh, uh, how to design a policy, a penalty schedule such that you maximize the so-called disciplinary effects, uh, hopefully above beyond the individual misconduct case itself, right? The fact here is that the government sanctions are costly and time resource consuming. So given the cost and resource consumption, and you want to have the highest effect. And uh, so, so this is actually one way to think about uh, this paper. And then um, there's, uh, sorry, there's a, I also have a very large and granular data uh, to allow authors to build director networks and also directly link individuals uh, uh, perception observations to his own actions. So there's a very clear separation of the performance of individual from the, that of the firms which individuals uh, work for. Uh, so maybe uh, you can use this for the uh, same idea and data to explore other uh, corporate finance issues. So it's already quite a, a extensive uh, test and, uh, and a results there. So what I'll do is I'll potentially uh, focus on potentially sharpen some of the tests here. Uh, maybe some comments on either, you know, uh, extending the paper or potentially put that into some kind of follow-up project. So uh, first of all, uh, I want to think a little bit more on this so-called uh, disciplinary effect of risk perception on monetary incentives, right? Now, the, the results is quite intuitive and it's, I, I, you know, it's very convincing. So, so there's no question about it. But I'd like to push a little bit further on this, right? Um, I'd like to see whether the results can say something or, or Mike and the co-authors can actually push something about whether, you know, this go back to, you know, what would be the optimal penalty schedule, right? So when and whether the penalty is optimal, right? So in other words, the results we observe, uh, do they capture the upper bound or the lower bound of this so-called disciplinary effect of risk perception? And in a way, put it differently, this is spillover effect of penalty uh, may not be linear. So, so think about it the two, per, two perspectives. One perspective is that, you know, there's always the reward of exerting effort to monitor, right? And there's also the cost of perceived penalty, perceived risk, right? Now, what happens if the reward of exerting effort to monitor actually is smaller than the cost of perceived penalty? Another way to think, of, another way to think about it is that a penalty uh, may affect all the directors, whether you're connected or unconnected, as long as penalty is sufficiently large. Okay, so that's another dimension to think about it. And the very last dimension to think about this is that what about the social consequences, all right? Now, what I wanna do is, is coming from one of the questions when you asked, uh, which is actually on my slides here, uh, I'm gonna brought this up because it's just happened recently, okay? So this is a case of a Kangmei pharmaceutical, right? It's a Chinese populist company. So what happened is literally about a month or two ago, um, November 12th, 2021, a Chinese local court uh, ruled Kangmei Pharmaceutical for a corporate fraud, okay? Under the ruling, so this is important because this is the first time ever the class action lawsuit, uh, the shareholder won the class action lawsuit. So under the ruling, the firm has to pay investors for a loss of 2.46 billion yuan. So that's equivalent to about $385.51 million. But that's not it, right? As Mike has showed you, right? Also, Five, sorry, five of the four, uh, firm's independent directors were ordered to assume 5% to 10% of the joint liability. So three out of five 
have to pay 10% of the 2.46 billion yuan. What's their guilt? They're, guilt? they're guilty for hiding their signatures on 2016, 2017 annual reports and on 2018 semi annual reports. The other two out of five independent directors are going to pay 5% of the 2.46 billion yuan. Uh, 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 you know, a compensation. Uh, what's their guilt? And their guilt is, is hiding their signature on the 2018 semi annual report. These are not the annual reports, okay? Now, these two poor guys only assumed the service of independent directors for the company for only three months, okay? So think about these five unfortunate directors. During the course of their tenure as directors, they collectively collect 1.79 million yuan as their uh, director pay. Now, for this firm, roughly the annual salary they pay for being an independent director is about 120,000 yuan. But what's the total fine here? It's 368 million yuan. Okay, so you can see that the, the benefit they receive as a director is far below the personal fund they have. And you can look at those poor guys, right? So some are 76 years old, some are 65 years old, and uh, four of them actually are college professors. Okay, all right. So uh, then what happened? Then we have something called the Great Escape of Independent Directors. Okay, so this thing happens on November 21st, uh, the 12th. And then within one week, there's a flood of resignations of independent directors of listed companies. Okay, so, so in China, once an independent director resigned, the firm has to make a public announcement. So I'm going to just give you some of screenshots of these are the announcements by the listed companies about resignations of their independent directors around that period of time. Okay, so not only there's a, a, a large number of independent directors resign from the post, but also many of the highly trained experts and academias openly refuse to take on job of being independent directors of publicly traded companies. And they're citing because there are too much liabilities and too much works, but too little reward. So kind of what we see these days in the real world. So this actually case may suggest there's a social cost here. You think about in China, right? This is a country has a urgent need to involve expert individuals to help improve corporate governance. Yet we have these talented individuals choose to stay out of director labor market, okay? So let's go back to my early question, right? So this is so-called disciplinary effect of penalty spillover may not be linear in the following way. As an individual, we always trade off the benefits of exerting efforts and the cost of risk, right? So in this case, the cost for directors being perceived risk of being penalized uh, uh, and being sanctioned by government. But the point here is that, if the perceived risk and the social penalties are too high, remember these people can walk away, right? They can just walk away and therefore there's no monitoring. So that's having said that, you know, to follow that this thought up here, okay? Is it possible to also consider incorporating director turnover in this kind of a contest, right? So, so maybe it's beyond the scope of this paper, okay? But, but just think about this case, right? And also relatively, will there be any unintended social consequences? So let me elaborate that a little bit more here, okay? Suppose the perceived risk is very high. So think about the case of a comic, right? Now, the director can choose to quit their jobs, okay? Now, when the director chooses to quit their jobs and stay out of market, the consequences of this direct turnover are going to actually put a constraint on a local director labor market. So which means that the firm really need to hire director, independent directors going to be future squeezed, right? They're not, they're not going to have much of selections for them to hire. So that may have some kind of negative unintended social consequence. Now, you can argue, wait a second here, let's not worry about too much the penalty being high. Let's say the penalty is high enough, but not too high. That create a discipline effect on independent directors to monitor, right? So let's think about an independent director decides, okay, now there's a perceived risk. I'm gonna exert more effort to monitor. Previously, I sit on 10, 200 boards, right? In order to monitor, I have to focus, right? So in other words, there's only 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So in other words, the directors may have a turnover by reducing the board seats to focus their effort for monitor. For monitor. But point here is that there's a selection, right? What kind of firms would such a director to drop? What kind of firms would they want to keep? Of course, should it be the high paying jobs uh, firms, right? Or the low risk firms, right? That's what actually might you have a paper, you know, results kind of showing that. So it turns out these kind of a firms, gonna, low risk firms and the high paying 
uh, 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 firms gonna attract the talent directors, which means that they're gonna crowd out the small firms because these are firms typically pay you know, low fees for directors or high risk firms. But if you think about them from a social planner perspective, these are the small firms and the high risk firm probably need these talented individuals to, to, to do a better job on monitoring, okay? Now, so, so think about that perspective. Let's assume that, you guys assume that there's some merits on this so-called nonlinear disciplinary effect of penalty spillover, okay? Now, in this context, right? Now, what does this outcome variable direct dissension uh, uh, capture here? Let's just not, let's not even think about a turnover, just think about the, the voting behavior, right? Now, there could be two things going on. One is potentially, uh, I'm like, like to, to vote against, um, that shows the increased effort to monitor by connected directors. So in this case, this is, these actions are value enhancing for firms. But one alternative interpretation could it be after this, this different perception of risk, connected directors become overly risk worst. Okay. Now, if they're risk worst, you know what they do. Um, you know they probably would like to be overly conservative, preventing firm from chasing high risk, high return projects, right? And uh, in a, the point for their incentive here is that okay. So if I say yes, my signatures on the on, on the documents, I could have a high risk of a penalized. But if I say no, you know, or I'm, you know, I walk away, uh, saying nothing, um, I may actually immune me from taking the responsibility. Okay, so if you should take a look at figure, figure three, that seems to be it's kind of a simple, a tiny suggestion there, saying that the abstention increases slightly faster than the objection. So the other, the point here might be is that they could be both. Okay, they could be both. It depending on the stage of utility function of the individuals. I'm not sure the car result in the paper actually helps, um, uh, but maybe what you want to do is you want to start showing some examples of proposals being voted against. So people have an idea, are these just because directors are overly conservative or is actually the vote really reflect, reflects the monitoring uh, incentives? Okay, so so I'm, I'm running out of time here. Uh, just very last slide, let me just quickly go through this here. Um, so in terms of cross-section test, uh, you look at the social connections. Um, there's, you have very nice data. You can also explore the professional connections of another uh, uh, dimension. Uh, for example, uh, more past connections, if the penalized directors and observing directors uh, attend board uh, meetings more frequently in the past, which means that they're more connected socially, or if the observing directors are serving similar committee functions as the penalized directors for the other firm. So maybe, oh, we're, we're doing the same work. So the other guy get penalized, maybe I'd better watch out. And another thing is that the personal cost uh, may vary uh, in the sense that, uh, for example, you know, the, the, the perceived risk on the discipline effect may be smaller uh, if there's a very tight local labor market because you know, the firm has no choice. Um, it could be a larger effect uh, if the observing directors have a very higher wealth stake. For example, the director has a high paying of war seas and losing that could be more damaging to the directors. Okay, so uh, so let me just summarize in 10 seconds here. It's a very nice paper, uh, has a very intuitive robust findings and I hope that had a very nice uh, rich implications. The very nice data uh, may allow for exploring other corporate finance uh, topics and I look forward to the next version of the paper. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much, Jayun, that, that was great. Um, I love the example. I, I assume that was big news in China. I, I hadn't heard about it, um, but yeah, it's a great, great, great example. I think that uh, my prediction is that salaries will go up for independent directors in, in China as, as they probably should, because um, they were in our data, they're lower than they were in the US. My guess is that won't last very much longer. Um, so June, what's next? Um, okay, so turn. I want to follow up on Xiaoyun's uh, comment a little bit because I've been paying a lot of attention to this comment event. Uh, so there is a huge, I call the exodus of directors in the first two weeks. And that kind of slowed down a little bit because in the Chinese system, there's a requirement of board independence to be at least one third. So if everybody is rushing to the door, everybody wants to exit, then if the independence goes down to below one third, nobody can exit. So we will see even more exit at the annual shareholders meeting early next year. So that will be in April or May. So we'll see a much longer list because now people are stuck. So if, people can't quit even? 
because if they quit, that will draw the independence to be below one third. It's not allowed. So they can show their intention to quit, but it won't be effective till the board find a substitute. I show you point out. Maybe it's much harder to find a substitute these days, especially college professors. I see. Um, so I did talk to um, a few people who have been serving on multiple boards. So their discussions, for example, uh, maybe right now the maximum boards you can serve is five. Maybe you can reduce that further. That's exactly as you suggested. But the requirement for the time you spend on each company should be longer, say about a month of each year, that will come with much higher compensation. Again, as Xiaoyun suggests, I think this is a really hot topic right now because uh, the class action lawsuit not only increase your um, perception of risk, but also the penalty right. conditional on there's a, a the, the amount of penalty conditional on there's It's really interesting. What will happen to those guys? Uh, will tell you will they will they have to declare bankruptcy or something or? Well, they just can't pay, right? So that's a really big amount of money. And these are actually, I think, four of the five are just college professors. So what uh, happened? So what happened? Do they go to jail, or can they declare bankruptcy, or what? what there, so there are some development. Um, two main players of the company, they're not directors. They got a sentence, so that's a different one. That's like a DOJ, right? They got a sentence of twelve years and ten years in jail. In jail. In jail. So that's separate. They are not uh, independent directors. And um, for this penalty of two points on billing, the company went into a bankruptcy process. There is a reorganization, there is a state owned enterprise uh, backed by Guangzhou. They are coming in to bail out the entire enterprise. So in the end, because in the Chinese law is the company pays the penalty first on behalf of these independent directors. If the company is really bankrupt, they have to pay personally. But based on the most recent development, maybe these directors are okay. Okay. But many qualified um, directors like Xiao Yun, probably they're super concerned about serving on these boards because <laughs> because the penalty can be huge. So I, I think that's uh, what Xiaoyun brought up is, is really a great thing and it's really, really hot. I've been thinking about this topic myself uh, for a while. Oh, really? I, I did not know about this case, but obviously it's a, in China, it's a huge deal. We, we have other things we've been worried about in the US, but <laughs> <laughs> like COVID. Uh, okay, uh, uh, do you wanna do other there, questions? There, there are a few questions uh, from the audience. So I'm going to maybe combine a few of them. So two questions about uh, multiple board seats. So these are perhaps busy directors. So, and they are serving on multiple boards. Uh, to what extent the effect from these penalized directors to these directors are driven by these busy directors? And to what extent that will affect your estimation that overestimate I of the effect or not? No, again, again the, the, the directors who are busy are nonetheless not directly connected to, or they either are or aren't, but that, that we control for that in the, in the regression. I don't believe we have controls for how busy they are, but I may be mistaken. Um, that's certainly something we could do. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that's one question. Um, another question, Shoyan already covered, to what extent this is your voice against your feet, right? So the exit, yeah. I've been thinking yeah. about yeah. that for a while. Um, that may be another project. <laughs> yeah, we certainly could. Uh, we should, that's certainly something we can look at. We, uh, I don't believe we have. Um, yeah, I, I like the paper as it is. All right, so there, um, uh, there's another question I'm going to read it. Janet, my other colleague. Janet has a question. Could dissension simply capture distrust? In other words, because a person has a spotty record, he or she is more likely to be attacked or opposed in the portion. They certainly could uh, reflect distrust, but again, the, 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 what we look at is the difference between connected directors and non-connected directors. And I don't quite know why they would, be different. They would distrust the management uh, more or less, depending on whether they're connected to a board member who is, um, who is penalized. 
Yeah, I agree. I, I like this paper a lot because you have the director fixed effects as well as the firm year or firm quarter fixed effects. So a lot of suspicions are limited because you have these fixed effects. Oh, yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah we have lots of fixed effects. Here. So I, I didn't get into all the fixed effects in the. If you work in corporate governance area, firm fixed effect usually kill most of your results. <laughs> firm quarter interactive fixed effects, you don't really imagine that because that's essentially clean everything. Yeah, but we have, our, again, our paper is about the differences within the board of their voting behavior. So therefore, the, the firm fixed effects aren't really a big deal. So there are two more challenges for you. One question is about what's your contribution to the literature relative to other research on director networks? Well, I mean, I think what we do is we try and link the, uh, I don't think that this paper is being about director networks. I think about it as being about um, kind of measuring the incentive effects of a penalty and, and trying to look at the kind of indirect effects of, of penalties on directors um, and the way they are affected you know, and, and how much they're affected by the perceptions of the penalties applying to a particular person. Right? Um, I agree. And my colleague Alexandra challenged you to say, what is the externality or external validity of your research? Well, well I'm not quite sure. What so I suppose he didn't expand. I suppose this is more, maybe this is a context in China to what extent your story give us implication or what do we learn from this specific context that we can apply to here? I think that's probably in the slide you skipped. Well, I, I get, yeah, 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 there's a slide at the end I didn't get to. So, so uh, I mean, the question, we've gotten this question before, is, is this a China paper or is this a paper about boards? And I think about it as a paper about boards using Chinese data, just like when we have papers using US data, we like to think that they apply in other countries as well. There's no reason why papers using Chinese data wouldn't apply in other countries as well. Um, I think the difference, you know, there's many, many, many differences between China and most Western countries, but one, one of the key things is that the, what I pointed out at the beginning of the talk, that the penalties are observable publicly, and so are the dissension votes. And I like to think that um, in the US or Germany or UK or whatever country you're interested in, if the directors perceive an increased likelihood of being penalized, that these results suggest that, well, yeah, they're gonna change the, what, what their actions are. Um, so I, I, I like to, you know, but again, we have no way of documenting whether that's a true or false statement, but certainly, I think about this paper is about the way people behave when they're put in a board situation and face the incentives that directors face um, as opposed to being just about China. But again, you guys can interpret the results any way you want. So the last question from the audience, um, because many people interpret these independent directors in China as not so independent. What will be the influence from the controlling shareholders? I, I don't know. I mean, the, the, these, these penalties affect the directors and we observe when they're perceived, when, when, when they're likely to perceive the penalties, expected future penalties going up, that their personal uh, actions change, right? Not the actions of the controlling shareholders, right? So it's the, it's the personal actions, right? And as Jayun pointed out, when there was a potentially huge penalty on directors, they all just quit their jobs, right? And, um, and so it's not, the, uh, you know, and presumably the ones who quit their jobs, quit their jobs regardless of whether they were friends of the controlling shareholder or whether they're just a regular old professor somewhere. Uh, they, they quit their jobs because they didn't want to pay millions of dollars in fines or millions of, you know, hundreds of millions of yuan in fine, fine, fines. Um, so, I mean, that's kind of how I think about it. Um, All right, thanks, Mike. So I'm going to make the concluding remark, okay. um, including our future events. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Xiaoyu. So I can skip probably the summary. I think uh, this is a unique Chinese context that allow us to observe these penalties and allow us to observe monitoring activities. I think that's the beauty of the paper. And I personally believe this is a really good uh, good use of the Chinese setting. 
to examine a really important and classic uh, corporate governance uh, question. So that's uh, essentially why I like this paper so much. Next slide, please. And uh, the implication, this is the slide that Mike skipped that, oh, can, answer, yeah, sorry. that can answer some of the questions. The next page. Okay, I'll, I'll do that. So it's essential for stakeholders, if you're shareholders or if you're bondholders, which are a big thing in China, because bondholders have a lot, or banks have a lot of influence uh, on company decision, make directors accountable when seeking remedies. I think the November 12th court decision of this class action lawsuit is a milestone in the Chinese uh, history, because now these independent directors are really, they can be individually and personally liable for fraud committed by management. And so this is new to China, even though it's has been there in the US forever. So this may give us an event study um, on governance related issues for regulators. So this is essentially you want to make sure you have a good example to show everybody else there is a panel. And that's a good reminder to make sure that independent directors are monitoring and for our independent directors, I think Xiaoyun has a more balanced view. On the night, it may be good, but you may scare away some really highly qualified um, candidates if they're, especially if they're very risk averse, because the trade off is probably not worth it anymore. It's too much risk. And a lot of times when I talk to my friends who are serving on multiple boards, so one of them was banned for three years because he was, he was their chairman of the audit committee and the management inflate inventory. He said, there's no way I can tell they inflate the inventory by three times, 300%. And he was bad for three years. Um, and essentially what he told me is no matter how hard you try, there are certain things you won't be able to know. So that's kind of the downside and that's what you mentioned. So we did have two lectures before. Alex Edmund gave the very first one on ESG and Wei Jiang might mention that big one on data and technology. We have those materials on our website. These are the forthcoming events in the spring. Um, next month we have, so for the next two, these are about data and technology. So on February 2nd, my IO colleague Angie and Scott will talk about who owns your data. So this is a little bit different from the traditional governance topics. But data and technology become so important that we integrate part of corporate governance. They will be more than welcome to attend this event. Um, in March, this is the only one from practitioners. Uh, this is by a uh, caddy alum, Justin Grius. He is a partner at McKinsey. So he's going to talk about cybersecurity. Again, many corporate boards are nervous about cybersecurity. They're thinking about what to do and how to incorporate cybersecurity into their overall risk management strategy. So in April, we will have Todd Wormley from uh, Washington University in St. Louis. He's going to talk about the passive investors. Uh, so the title is Indexing and Corporate Governance. These are all lectures. So they're going to summarize what's the main issues, what's the most recent results, what's the problems we face in practice. And the last one in the spring is going to be done by Alan Graff. So this is about uh, shareholder activism. So the title is Governance by Persuasion, Hedge Fund Activism and Market-Based Shareholder Influence. All these events are webinar events. So we're going to send links. Uh, please register for these events. And after each event, including today's, we're going to email you with the link to the recording, to the manuscript of Mike's paper, to Mike's slides, and to show you to show you this discussion slide. Um, Last, I'm here to re represent the Institute for Corporate Governance at Cali. We have two co-host uh, institutes. One is the ECGF, that's the European Corporate Governance Institute. Uh, I want to thank Marco and Elaine for their support. Another one is IU Ostrom Workshop. This is an IU integrated uh, organization across different disciplines. Um, I want to thank Scott uh, Shepard for, for his support. And uh, if you have any questions, any suggestions, if you want to be participating as a speaker for future events, uh, please feel free to email the ICD. And actually, Cassidy, who is right here, and I would respond to your emails. Again, uh, thank you for your participation. And that's the end for today's event. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Xiaoyi.
Thank you, June. Thank you, Mike.